Manwa starts showing us a big explosion in the final dungeon which makes everything collapse and every prisoner in the place start to fight their way out to freedom. In that moment we see a mysterious boy fighting, and it seems that there is a rebellion going on so every prisoner can escape. And this is the beginning of an impressive story. We can see our protagonist telling the prisoners that they will end up dead if they stop just for a second. Meanwhile we can see something like demons fighting against our protagonist to take back control of the dungeon, and we can see the dungeon leader ordering to kill them all filthy who destroyed his sanctuary. In a scene change we can see our protagonist and someone who seems to be a prisoner telling that they are outnumbered and that they would be captured. In that moment we can see an explosion and what it seems to be a superhuman behind the prisoners, and it is our protagonist and his name is Seo Moon. He was telling them that if they managed to escape he wanted his story to be told, which makes us understand that he is staying to fight against everyone to save his friends from death. In S scene change we can now see the real world and it seems that they think they are the only ones on earth. In that moment we can see a hooded man crashing against a human bane. And when the human turns to complain about why the guy ran into him like that, we can see how this mysterious man seems to be a demon and we find out that those underworld people had made a deal to get into earth. At that point we see how this underworld guy reveals who he is in the middle of the city. And that means the beginning of the invasion of earth by these underworld demons and they started to spread into the real world. And you could see that this would be the imminent elimination of the human being. But in that moment we can see how humanity strikes back quickly but even with the most powerful weapon. They couldn't harm them because these demons had a mystic power making them immune to any attack and they would even evade the military weapon trying to stop them. Nevertheless, we can see how the situation would change a bit later because those mystic powers started to affect the humans, which they were influenced by those powers and they transformed into superhumans, carrying new mystic powers now, powers that none of the underworld had. And we can see how humans started to fight this underworld civilization when they realized that they had these powers, they also were getting rid of every underworld dungeon one by one. At that point, humanity had hope again and finally they managed to cross the final dungeon door. And we can see that in spring of 2005 the seven most powerful superhumans gathered to attack the last dungeon, which seemed to be an underworld human civilization base and when they set all free, they put an end to the war between worlds. Thanks to this achievement they were called the seven heroes who saved humanity. They were honored with fame, money and respect. But unfortunately, one person couldn't get back from the underworld battle. And we can see a ceremony in honor of Seo Moon which was the leader of the seven superhumans and he was the only one who couldn't get back and receive all the recognition and glory upon winning the war. We can see how humans made a giant statue of him for his honor and sacrifice. The heroes who came back turned into stars while the fallen hero became a legend. In a new scene we can see that 17 years has passed and a world totally changed. We can see a tournament going on between South Korea and France. We can see how France starts attacking but our team could attack back in a proper way. In that moment we can see a player called Nathan Bernard who had finished with our players in a merciless way. Then we can see that Nathan had claimed 6 assassinations just by himself and we can see that he is a very strong superhuman. People started to ask to themselves if they had a player like that since the beginning of the Battlefield League. Then we can see the tournament announcers saying that Nathan's performance was as expected since he was top 3 all time in the tournament's history. And that worries everyone because the national team would be eliminated without having opportunity fight back and in that moment we can see that the only player still standing is a girl named B. K. N. who knows that this is a battle with low to none chances of winning. And yet she goes after Nathan, fearless, and we see that she uses her special ability called whip to attack Nathan face to face, which leaves the crowd speechless for her strength. In that moment we see that she is one of the legendary seven heroes daughter those who saved humanity but nathan says that she wouldn't be able to defeat him with a team like that and we can see how he slices bk in in half with one strike the daughter of one of the seven heroes is totally dead south korea takes a massive defeat against russia and we see how the national team couldn't defeat nathan and we can see how he managed to get seven kills in the second half and putting an end to the match south korea versus france with a perfect score of zero to one in that moment we can see the crowd very disappointed saying that it was a horrible disaster and that Korea used to have great heroes that destroyed many dungeons during the war against the underworld era, but they couldn't keep the pace, and that was a shame. A country that gave birth two of the heroes who saved the world, Seo Moon and Beak Jaho, and yet the fight end up with a total defeat against France. Commentators say that France has a very strong team but it was a very sad battle and people from Korea are probably very disappointed now.
In that moment we can see how many spectators are so upset about the defeat and we can see all the national spectators disappointment for that loss. Now we can see that Beek Jeho was the national team's coach and says that this is the third defeat since he is the captain and that the audience is right and he said that only Hayeon was worth it and everyone else was a nobody. Said that Korean superhumans were famous for being brave and strong but that was a thing from the past now. Then we can see the captain leaving the place and saying that all promising heroes died or left a long time ago. We can see him discouraged and watching the sky saying yo, it would be great if you were still alive in that moment his assistant coach calls him saying that he must be at the conference and he wants to go and apologize with the audience. We can see how disappointed he is about the performance and he will be resigning as team coach and that the only way he could stay was if Munyon came back to life somehow. He says that is better to resign now before damaging his reputation. But his assistant says that there would be no hope for the team if he resigns. Then we can see how the chairman of the association calls the coach and says that someone fell from the sky where the statues of the heroes were. That he was carrying an armor and that person is the same from 17 years ago, the one who saved six of the seven heroes and scarifying himself to save the world. In that moment we can see how Seo Moon came back from the dead. In that moment we can see what really happened with Seo Moon, which was fighting against the underworld demons and we can see the gates of the underworld closing. And that let us know that Seo Moon have been fighting for 17 years so no demon can get to the surface of Earth. In that moment we can hear Seo Moon saying to all the remaining demons that this is a battle to death, and that the most powerful would be the only one who survives. In that moment we can see how Seo Moon wakes up in what it seems to be a hospital where he was recovering and we can see a nurse saying that he finally has awakened. Seo Moon asks, where am I? And the nurse says that he is okay, that he is in the hospital. Seo Moon was in shock at that moment when he realizes that it is the year 2022 and not 2005. He realizes that 17 years have passed but says that it makes no sense, since it was 2005 when he entered the last dungeon. The nurse says that it is difficult to explain the situation and asks him to watch the TV, where the news were on, saying that Seo Moon Yeon, leader of the seven heroes, who was believed to be dead, had returned after 17 years and that he was being treated in the Korea Central Hospital. It is also said that Mr. Seo Moon Yeon fell from the sky in Gwangwoman and he was found in front of his own statue unconscious but his life is not at risk. He only had minor wounds and he was wearing the same equipment he used in 2005 when he entered the dungeon and he might be a superhuman since he looks the same. He hasn't changed in 17 years. In a different scene we can see a group of scientists discussing that this could be possible thanks to a distortion in the time and space. In that moment the news ended and Seo Moon asks if really 17 years have passed and from his side. Only a few days ago it was 2005. The nurse said that indeed that was the case and that's why there are so many people outside the hospital. After he was taken to the hospital, reporters have camped outside. Seo Moon asks the nurse for a mirror and he realizes that he haven't aged at all and there is no way he can look like that at 47. So he starts to ask to himself if that distortion between time and space could be real, since he haven't seen one like that. Seo Moon asks about his fortune and we see that it was all donated to Child Protection Foundation, and his home is now a museum, his brand new car auctioned for charity. In that moment Seo Moon realizes that he is poor and he can't live in a hospital but he doesn't have a home. He was sad thinking that he should have saved some money in case of this. But the nurse says that he is a hero that saved the world and if he really believes that people will abandon him. She said that Mr. Beak Jaho heard the news and contacted them, that he would come to see him. And then the nurse says that she has to go and if he needs anything just ring the bell and she would come to attend him. Seo Moon still can't believe what is happening and asks Jeho for the details and the first thing they should do is to check his body. In that moment we can see how he activates his powers and start analyzing himself, since that was the first power that made him the stronger superhuman in the world. These eyes not only sees other powers but can also increase his abilities in the future. That's the reason he was able to grow faster than the others and that's why he became the leader of the dungeon incursion at a short age. Then we can see that Seo Moon was the one who helped Jeho to be a really good superhuman human since with his powers. He could see all the potential he had, so he took him as student. Yet he said that if he died following him it wouldn't be his problem. He was raised with those eyes and he saw that he had a willpower of 110 and he questioned that because the limit was 100 for humans. So he realized in that moment that he has a new power, immortality. He was immune to death for physical causes. Power he acquired when he beat the final boss in the final gate. In that moment we can see Jeho entering and Seo Moon asks if he has gotten weaker. And Jeho crying and laughing says that he is a pacifist. So Seo Moon makes fun of him because he saw him crying. Jeho says that when he gets older he would cry more easily for anything. 
Then Seo Moon asks him if he kept the promise about telling his story and Jeho says that he contacted a ghost editor that was a fantasy author and he wrote a book called Seo Moon the World Savior. Jeho said that there even was a documentary and a movie made as a mythological story and that movie reached the top one worldwide. Seo Moon asks what he should do now because he thought he was dead and suddenly he appeared in the hospital 17 years later and this new world was filled with so many stuff he didn't know about. Seo Moon says that he is sure that this was not an illusion but still feels unreal and even when he saved the world. He is poor and homeless. So Jeho takes his hand saying that this is what friends are for and if he needed money she should just ask. So Seo Moon asked if he had made that money in this past 17 years. So Jeho said that he had the money from the incursions and he made money in the subterranean war against the demons. But he didn't stop there. He invested the money and made more. Seo Moon said that even with all that money, how could a business stay on float being leaded by a dumb like him? So Jeho said that it was hard to admit but he let handed that job to a professional so apparently he is unemployed by now and Seo Moon says that he has to do something about it since he is training the national team. In that moment Jeho shows him the tournament where his pupils fight since the arena are the same as the dungeons where they fought 17 years ago. Jeho says that it is a virtual reality game called Battlefight. Seo Moon asks if what they do is just materialize a dungeon in virtual reality, and they use it as a field for two teams to compete against each other as a sport. So Jeho says that it is a business to use superhumans since after the war they became useless. But it is extremely popular since its creation and it is the most well-known sport, and Seo Moon says that for him it seems to be a bunch of kids playing. So Jeho says that it is not like that. He says that they are not comparable with the seven heroes but the Battlefield World Cup is a thing of national pride. So Seo Moon asks how is the national team doing? He says that they should be raking high but Jeho says that actually South Korea is among the last and we see how Seo Moon throws his coffee angry to hear that. In a new scene we see Seo Moon and Jeho in a car chatting about when a great evil disappear. The next one surpasses the former one and that's why our nation is weak in the battlefield. And Jeho tells Seo Moon that when the war was over, some superiors were scared of the superhumans who had nowhere to go. They didn't know when the tables may turn on them or something and that's why the battlefield is so strictly regulated. Because it's believed that humans have a destructive power and they tried to take control of the nation. And that's what happened to Jeho, who tells Seo Moon that every superhuman who was considered strong those days, they belonged to other nations and they became either players or coaches. And Jeho says that when he was there, there were people who tried to use them in any possible way and that he should have broken all of their knees in that time. But Jeho says that is because of the way he talks to everybody, from politics to the president. And Seo Moon says that it is because the way they try to use them so it makes him angry. Jeho says that their average level is low because they had a bad start and he tries to ask Seo Moon if he wants to be a player, but he steps up and says no. Seo Moon says that he doesn't want to live as a superhuman anymore, that this life ended heroically in that last dungeon. Jeho says that in Battlefield you don't fight with a sense of duty is just a sport. And Seo Moon says that he never had a sense of duty, that he fought for survival and to be recognized once he became a superhuman and he asks Jeho if he doesn't think that it is time now to live his life. Also, if he announces that he is coming back, the press will create false expectations and everything will be strike back at him. Jeho asks him if he wasn't interested in being the best in the battle fight, but Seo Moon says no, he says that he hated being a clown, so Jeho says that he wouldn't bother him with that anymore. Then Seo Moon sees a spectacle on the street and says that Korea's superhuman haven't failed completely, that they still have superhumans like that and he points at Beak, the spectacle and says that she is very sexy. Jeho reveals that she is her daughter, Seo Moon says wasn't she 6 years old. Then Jeho reminds him that 17 years have passed and she is 23 now. Seo Moon tries to fix that situation and says that she is pretty and she looks the same. But Jeho tells him that he can stop now and Seo Moon apologizes. In a change of scene we can see that they arrived their destination which is Jaho's home. There they are received by Jeho's wife, Han Sumi, who greets Seo Moon and says that a long time has passed and it is good to see him. But he says that for him it was just a week. She tells a joke about how she got so old just in a week, but Seo Moon says that for him is really like that and that she looks the same. Sumi tells Jeho that he has worked enough now, but he says that it is nothing compared with his friend who was considered dead and came back to life. Seo Moon watches the couple talking and says that it feels real now, that he really came back to a peaceful world without dungeons or fights, so he asks himself what to do now. For now he says that he decided to spend some time playing, and we see him lying on a sofa eating fries while watching TV. Suddenly he finds a show called Stairs to Hell and he is surprised by the fact they are transmitting this show again, and he wanted to know how it ended. He is happy and says this is the reason why he came back to life. Jeho gets past his back, sees him while Seo Moon shouts that there are enough fries now and he will watch the whole series and drama he missed since 2005. 
Jeho goes to him and asks if he is really going to watch drama all the time, and he answers yes, why? Jeho says that he can live his life by his own but there are a lot of people out there and those reporters have been waiting for days and they would not leave until they saw him. Seo Moon turns angrily and sees that there are a lot of them, so he gives up and tells Jeho to bring the reporters tomorrow, he wants them all in a single place and he want to be left alone from now on. In a new scene we see Seo Moon and Jeho entering in a news studio while reporters are talking to each other and they said that they felt that they could be seated for months outside Jeho's house and they say that Seo Moon looks serene, more that they thought. Then another one said that he had heard that Seo Moon would destroy everything if there is something he don't like and they asked to themselves if everything would end flawlessly. And the conference started. There, Seo Moon says that as they can see, he has returned and just like them, he is surprised by this situation, so they should be too. Jeho feels relieved because his is taking it easy, more than usual, but then Seo Moon says that he is not grateful with the attention people has given to him so he tells them to ask everything they want today and never pay attentions to him anymore. Jeho says to himself as I thought, that part of him hasn't changed. So the round of questions starts. One journalist asks how he came back from the last dungeon, but Seo Moon says that he doesn't know and he doesn't have a more satisfactory answer for that. Another one asks if he has any memory from the last past years. He said no, that for him 2005 was a couple of days ago. Another one asks if he's been in touch with any other hero. Seo Moon says no, that they were no close. Another journalist asks if he wants to claim back his wealth and Seo Moon says that he doesn't have it. Then a more spicy journalist asks if he wants to become an active battlefield player, and Seo Moon says no. The journalist asks why and Seo Moon says that he has no motivation. The journalist asks if that is because he feels that he failed, and he said that the only thing failing there was his hair and he adds that he is not interested and he doesn't find it fun, says to not expect him there being a clown just for their amusement. The conference ends and Seo Moon says that he hopes every doubt has been cleared and he doesn't want to be bothered again, and he says goodbye. But then a journalist with a pair of glasses says that a player called Gerald Walker talked about him and said that the heroes were nothing and they wouldn't be able to even touch him, so he wanted to know what Seo Moon thinks about that. Seo Moon looks interested and asks about that person. The journalist says that it is about the United States battlefield star, who they call the pride of American tanks. Seo Moon asks if Gerald Walker is the strongest player and the journalist says that there are three spots for the best players and they are Nathan Bernard from France, Roy Miller from Ireland and Daniel Mansk from Germany. Walker is not among them even though he is very good. Then Seo Moon says that if he can't be among the top three, then he can't say anything. If he wants to fight him, then he can look for him in the real life, that he would bury him in his garden with his hands while he gives his middle finger. In a new scene we can see two people watching the transmission. One of them is Zachary Wood, a manager from one of the battlefields player from the United States and he is showing it to Gerald Walker who smashes a remote with his hands just to hear that and tells Wood to get an airplane ready to go to Korea right now. In a new scene we can see that Jeho is being informed about an a match, an official international match between countries with their national a teams against United States. Seo Moon complains about Jeho's noise and asks what's happening. Jeho explained the situation and says that they will have a match in two weeks. Seo Moon didn't care but Jeho says that it is his fault for answering Gerald Walker. Seo Moon didn't even remember who he was and Jeho had to remember him. Then he says that he apparently got mad after being humiliated in public by him. Seo Moon calls him a crybaby and Jeho explains that Gerald is very sensible about the matter for not being in the top three, and he wants to fight him, but since he is not in the battlefield, he wants to do it with the South Korean team instead. Yob asks what that has to do with him and wish Jeho good luck and he will be lazy for him. In that moment Seo Moon reflects about the match and asks if Hayeon will be there as well. Then in a new scene we see Hayeon arriving home. Her mother says that she arrived earlier than she thought. She says that Si rushed after she heard her uncle was there, also she wanted to see her parents. Hayeon asks where her uncle is and her mother says that he is watching TV in the living room. When she sees him she got exited and tackles him. Seo Moon tells her that she is grown now and she almost kills him. He tells that he was worried about the possibility of her forgetting him by now. Hayen says that she couldn't forget him because he was always playing with her and she loved when he brought cookies or chocolates to her, those things her parents never let her have. Seo Moon says that she indeed has grown and kids grow very fast. She reminds him that she is 23 now. Seo Moon asks if she has returned for the match, but she says that the match is just her secondary mission, that she came to see him. Then she asks if it is true that he is not interested in Battlefield, and he asks her if Jeho made her ask that and that he has zero interest in things like that. She asks why and she throws a tantrum, but Jiob doesn't fall for it and she says that he has changed, but he says that it is clear that the ones who changed were them. Hayen, depressed says that he always used to listen to her favors, but he says that those favors were about getting sweets only. Then she came up with something else and she asks him to go with her to an avatar check in the association. 
He asks what that is and she explains to him. Seo Moon finds it tedious and he wants to finish his TV drama but he accepts Hayeon's pleadings. Seo Moon asks where are they going and she says that he'll find out only if he comes with her. In a new scene we can see the South Korea Battlefield Association building where a person in charge receives them, asks them to follow him and says that Hayeon's avatar checking will begin. She put on the helmet and connects to the simulation. She asks if Jiab is watching and she wants a monster so she can start moving a bit. Then a huge werewolf appears in front of her. Seo Moon looks interested in the fact that they can do that as well. Then the one in charge explains that it is a VR sport where they recreate dungeons, monsters and players, so that's why all beginners have to go to the association and create an avatar. Seo Moon says that it really looks real and he is staying to see how good Heian is. The werewolf attacks the girl and she decapitates it skillfully. Then the one in charge says that the synchronization rate with the avatar has been confirmed and she can disconnect now. Heian rushes out to Seo Moon and asks him how she did. He says that it wasn't bad for a six years old girl, but there is still a huge road ahead of her, so she she says why don't you try. He insists that he doesn't want to compete in Battlefield but she says that she is not asking him to do that, she just want him to test it. Since his father has told her a lot about him and she has the curiosity to see how strong he is in person because he was already gone by the time she was old enough to see him fight. Seo Moon accepts saying that he is doing it only because is she who asked. The one in charge says that normally they would measure his statistics before the avatar check but since he is not competing in a real game they could do it right now. Seo Moon asks if he just have to get in. The one in charge says that if he enters just as he is at the moment his avatar would be empty handed and only with a hoodie so he should get some weapons first. So a couple of workers appear with them. He grabs them and say that they are very light for his size. The one in charge says that he is holding battlefield equipment. That player would normally use custom gear, but that gear is just for tryouts. But he offers him something else if he find that equipment uncomfortable. But Seo Moon says that it is okay, one spear is enough and he connects to the simulation. Seo Moon opens his eyes and the one in charge says that he's in a virtual area now, a complete duplicate of a real test area. Seo Moon sees his hand and says that it is pretty similar to when you cross through a dungeon gate. A screen appears and the one in charge says that everything seems to be fine, not synchronization errors between the avatar and the real body while Heian cheers him in the background. Seo Moon starts stretching ask for whatever they want to throw at him just like they did with Heian. Then a monster that looks like a giant stingray appears, Seo Moon says that it is called Salarbun but he feels like there is a slight difference compared to the ones he knows. The one in charge says that he is right, it is the same monster but created from the information they have about the strongest of them. The monster rushes towards Seo Moon, but he doesn't move and throws his spear into the air, saying that he brought a spear for nothing while he is breathing into his hand, making the monster disappear with one punch using only his finger. Heian is in shock and says that it is crazy, but Seo Moon says that they are making a scene for nothing. The one in charge says that in fact Salarbun is not a difficult monster to face but neither one to defeat only with a finger, so Seo Moon asks to summon another one not that trash because he want to try something. Seo Moon reflects on the matter and realizes that this is not that different from the real life and says that he could try that in this environment. So he tells the one in charge that even though that was the strongest variant, he couldn't stretch enough, but nothing can be done about it anymore. So a text in English appears saying that if his title is the strongest superhuman, there is no way he could be satisfied with a Salarbun. Suddenly all holograms in the room turns into red and the one in charge asks why everything is suddenly like that and Heian asks what's going on. Suddenly a bunch of warning signs appear and the one in charge says that someone is trying to connect with an external module. And now we see Gerald Walker bursting into the training area with a halberd and a shield asking Seo Moon if his invitation is still on foot. Seo Moon doesn't answer and Gerald asks why he is speechless and if he was scared because he really didn't expect him to come. Then he says that he doesn't know if there are 7 or 8 heroes but he will prove that those things were just a triviality, and he throws himself towards Seo Moon shouting him to die. Gerald throws an attack with his halberd but he realizes that Seo Moon isn't there and he just hit the floor. Then Seo Moon appears behind Gerald and says that it is impossible for him to be afraid. He was only thinking about how good this test would be. Then we see Heian and the one in charge watching the duel when a door gets opened and we see Jaho, Gerald Walker's manager, Emma Morse and the chairman of the association. Park Jinty getting into the room saying that they shouldn't be worried because he arranged everything and everything had been talked beforehand and he apologizes for the confusion. Then he asks Emma if that would be enough and she says that she appreciates his cooperation even when she knew that it was a difficult request. There, the chairman says that Seo Moon is in debt with him and if he had a conscience he wouldn't say anything but he says to himself that he should be grateful one because Seo Moon could maybe gain a bit of interest in Battlefield. Back into the simulation Seo Moon and Gerald continues with their fight. 
Seo Moon says to himself that this guy is better than he expected and he uses his ability to check his statistics and he finds out that he has 100 strength and resistance points, with a will of 87 and admits that he can back up a bit his foolishness. Gerald asks why he stopped fighting, but Seo Moon doesn't answer and says to himself that if someone like that would have existed back in his time, he might have taken him to the final dungeon. Then he remembers that he wanted to try the power he discovered when we woke up in the hospital and he wanted to try it with the Salarbun but since he had this guy in front of him, he would better try try it on him. Then Seo Moon pounces on Gerald and stops in front of him so Gerald could hit him with his halberd and Seo Moon says that he will show him something interesting. Gerald strikes Seo Moon and it seems like he is dead. Heian asks why he stood still and let himself to be hit and die. Gerald asks himself the same thing, he stood still as if he wanted to die. Suddenly Seo Moon says that it hurt more than he thought and throws his spear near Gerald who evades it by a millimeter and he says that he should be dead since he didn't even defend himself. Seo Moon appears coughing asking if they also simulated the smoke. Everyone is in shock when they see that Seo Moon is alive, who is asking everyone how he performed and that he said that he would show something interesting. Gerald asks himself how it is possible that he is still alive after being hit by that and Seo Moon reveals that he got a new superpower after being near to death and he became immortal. Then he says to himself that the test was a success and not only that but the power also cured the wound and says that this wouldn't be a fair fight. Then he tells to the one in charge that that for him, that is cheating, so he asks if they can block that power, so the one in charge agrees and proceeds to block it. Gerald asks him about the power and Seo Moon says that it was a new thing and he wanted to try it. But if that would really worked inside the simulation, then Gerald would blame the ability when he lose and that's why he wanted to block it. Gerald takes the spear and gives it back to Seo Moon, while saying that it is true everything about his arrogance and wants to know if his abilities are too, as rumors say. So Seo Moon answers and says reality will be different from rumors, because he is stronger than they think he is. Then Seo Moon provokes Gerald saying that why doesn't he defeat the best three in the first place since he is not among them, before he faced the final boss, which is him, that wouldn't be a good story. Gerald gets mad and rushes towards Seo Moon while he is mocking him. Gerald realizes that he hit the ground again and Seo Moon appears behind his back attacking him with the spear backwards. Gerald avoids the attack with his shield and Seo Moon thinks that it's not bad but it is time to finish this. Then he throws his spear which reaches Gerald, who gets injured. There Gerald let us know that the spear turned just before making contact with the shield. And that's a terrifying control, that was the real Seo Moon. Then our protagonist says that he won but Gerald says not yet, the spear just grazed him and he is not dead yet. Seo Moon says that he did it on purpose, and that he could never win with that shield that big. Then Seo Moon starts to give some advices, he tells him to change that shield for a smaller one since his shield blocks his vision. Gerald asks why is he doing this and Seo Moon says that is because he demonstrated that he wasn't just a chit chat. Then Seo Moon starts to analyze Gerald saying that maybe when he was little he was told that he had tunnel vision and he chose a big shield to defend himself while looking around in the middle of the fight. But that's an incomplete solution, thus people like Seo Moon can use his field of view against him. Gerald asks if he isn't lying, and Seo Moon says that even though he is telling that he is not matched for him, so Gerald agrees to try out. Meanwhile in the observation room Jeho asks why Seo Moon said all that if he already was causing enough trouble. Seo Moon tells Gerald to make sure and make a deposit for that lesson because the just taught him well. Gerald accepts with one condition, to fight with him again in the competition in two weeks. Seo Moon repeats that he is not interested because he has too many TV dramas to watch, but Gerald insists and says that he would pay him everything he wanted. Seo Moon refuses and thinks that Gerald has lost his mind. Gerald says that his power should not be wasted inside a house and Seo Moon says that he uses his powers as he wanted to. Everyone is watching their conversation on the other room and the chairman laughs in an evil way saying that he could use that. In a change of scene we see Seo Moon watching TV dramas in Jeho's house when suddenly the show gets interrupted by an emergency alert saying that Seo Moon might change his mind about competing in Battlefield. If the USA team wins 11-0 against Korea, then he would participate in a friendly match between the two countries and he accepted the challenge. So Seo Moon reacts insulting everyone and saying that he never said something like that. We see Seo Moon arguing with the chairman of the association, asking him when the hell did that happen and who was the anonymous source. Seo Moon shows his conversation with Gerald and said that they edited every part where he refused. The chairman stands up and he apologizes with a deep reverence, since these incidents affected the one who saved the world. The he says that there were some pressures from people with power and support of the people, and a chairman as weak as him could not refuse that proposition. But he says not to worry about it, that he has a brilliant plan in mind to avoid any troubles for him. 
he said that he agreed to a perfect score and if they don't lose 0 minus 11 he wouldn't have to be involved in all this. But Seo Moon says that he doesn't care, he's just not interested in Battlefield and he asks why everyone is bothering him with that. The chairman reassures him that it is nearly an impossible condition, so that's why he's asking for his help. He says that he will donate all revenues to child protection. And that's how the first part of this manhwa ends. If you want me to resume the second part, comment power.